My first year of mini painting has come to a close. Was it a waste of time? How many minis did I paint? And have I improved? You're about to find out. Hey my dudes, welcome back to Anvil Doom Minis. My name is Dietz, and as I said, I'm about to hit that 12 month mark of painting miniatures. I did a video a few months ago of six months of painting miniatures, and I thought it was pretty fun, so I thought I'd do a 12 month recap. We're gonna crunch some numbers, dive into how many minis I painted and which armies I painted, and also, I'm gonna do a little test at the end, kind of like an end of year exam. I'm gonna repaint one of the first minis I painted and see how much I've improved. So it was around August and September last year when I decided to pick up the paintbrushes and to start painting miniatures. I had one goal and it was to paint a full high elf army. Did I accomplish this goal? No, I didn't paint a full high elf army, but I did paint a few high elves. So I'm happy with that. One thing in my life that I always do, I always get distracted and I got distracted painting minis as well. I didn't really focus on too much of the high elves. I kind of went out and painted things from different armies, you know, um, chorfs and uh, wood elves and all sorts of different things as well. So I had some fun this year painting a diverse range of miniatures. All I'm thinking about though, is if I spent one year painting high elves, I'd be so good at painting blue and white, but anyway. So I'll start off by going through each individual game and then move on to each individual army from Warhammer Fantasy Battles. So we'll start off with the round bases and then we'll move on to the square bases, the main course. So first up, I painted two Age of Sigma minis this year. Now I'm not a real big fan of Age of Sigma, but my partner bought me a couple of minis uh, from Age of Sigma and they're pretty fun to paint and I could kind of test myself and kind of push myself with these miniatures as well. I painted a Lumineth Realm Lord Stone Mage and also an Arch Revenant for a combined total of two Age of Sigma minis. Now moving on to the Middle Earth strategy battle game or Lord of the Rings strategy battle game, I'm not sure what it's called anymore, but I loved this when I was a kid. I remember going to the news agency and finding these guys here with the little mini that they came with. They were amazing magazines. And I managed to get my hands on a Frodo this year. I painted one Frodo, so that's a total of one miniature for the Lord of the Rings or Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see me paint some more Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game, or if you'd like me to paint the whole fellowship. It's a dream of mine, one day I will do it. But let me know if that's something you'd like to see on the channel. So moving on to 40K, and I probably set the record for the miniature painter who painted the least amount of Space Marines this year. Let that sink in. I painted a grand total of two 40K minis. One of them was a 90 Space Marine for the Dazzalathan Challenge. The other one was a Dark Angels Chapter Master. Um, I kind of got caught in the Dark Angels hype this year, and I was like, oh wow, I want to paint this thing. So I painted one of those as well. And that was pretty fun as well. So that's a total of two 40K minis. Now all the trash is out the way. Let's get into the good stuff. Okay, so because I painted up such a large range of minis from Warhammer Fantasy Battles, I'll just go through each army from least to most. First up, we have Skaven, and I painted one little rat boy this year, but don't stress to all my rat lovers out there, I will be painting more Skaven. I got a big box of Skaven behind the camera that are waiting to get painted. Next up is the Mighty Empire, and I only painted one miniature from the Empire range. It was this Celestial Wizard. So I apologize to all the Empire boys and girls out there, but this year, I promise you, I will paint more Empire minis. I combined two factions for this one. It's the Undead or Vampire Counts and the Tomb Kings, and I painted two miniatures from this range. I painted the Undead Chariot and also the Lich Priest. Next up is a bit of a fun one. Well, I had lots of fun painting these miniatures, and it's, they're from the Dogs of War army. They are three Lumpen Croups halflings, and I love these guys. I love them so much. If you have a Dogs of War army, me, you're very lucky. I'm very jealous. One day I will get a Dogs of War army. It's just a matter of time. So that's a grand total of three miniatures from Dogs of War. So next up are the green skins and I painted no orcs at all this year. I painted a total of five gobos. So five goblins, but do not stress because October is around the bend and I'm looking forward to it. I'm very excited for October. And that's only like three weeks away and I've already got something planned. So moving on, I painted a grand total of seven dwarfs this year. I painted a rune priest, Grom Brindle the White Dwarf, Drong the Hard, a Flash of Dwarf, which was an absolutely amazing gift, two Guardians, and the Anvil of Doom. I had lots of fun painting dwarves, and I want to paint some more in this year as well. So next up, with a grand total of nine minis, are the Wood Elves. Now the Wood Elves are a faction that I dread painting because they're green. I really hate painting green. I really struggle with it. I painted two Wood Elf Arches, but stick around because I'm going to show you how I painted one of these arches in a minute and we can compare the two. Two Dryads, three War Dancers, and that includes my Olden Demon entry, one Glade Guard Champion, and one Heavy Classic Chunky Orion King of the Woods mod. Time for the top two, and I'm pretty sure you can guess what the top two are. 
But anyway, coming in at second are the Chalks or Chaos Dwarfs. I fell in love with this army this year and next year I'm going to collect more and paint more for the channel. I painted one Chalk Lord on Taurus and also 10 of these chunky little boys as well. Make sure you check out those videos if you haven't seen them yet. They were some of the funnest minis I painted this year. Okay, so drum roll, the faction that I most painted this year, no surprise, are the High Elves. And in total, I painted 34 High Elf minis this year. I really had a love-hate relationship with painting these guys this year. I love them so much, but the blue and the white are pretty difficult to get right. But yeah, anyway, I painted eight Phoenix Guards, eight White Lions of Krace, five Fourth Edition Spearmen, five Fourth Edition Archers, one Reaver, one Dragon Prince, two Mages, one Champion Archer, one Phoenix Guard Hero, Karadryan, one Elfari on the Blind, and one Anur Sword of Twilight, which is actually from Mordheim, but I gave him the high elf spin. Now I did paint 34 of these guys, but this year I'm gonna try paint at least 60 and get this army finished, so bear with me. That's every single mini I painted this year, and it comes to a grand total of 78 minis. Please don't compare me to Eons of Battle. I know he painted like 1.5 million minis, but I've got a day job, and if I painted more than that, I will probably be in an institution somewhere, so. Anyway, I feel like it's a good amount for one year. I'm very happy and one thing for me was to keep the quality as high as I possibly could and I feel like I've achieved that so I'm very happy. But next year is going to be another year and it's going to be even better. Okay, so that's how many minis I painted this year and now it's time for a test. So around one year ago, I painted this 4th edition Monopose Wood Elf Archer. It was in a pile of minis I bought to practice on. I feel like I did a pretty good job at the time for my first go, but I've learned a few things this year so let's paint up another one and see how far I've come. One thing I probably haven't learned this year or improved on is removing mold lines. Every time I do them, I swear to God I miss like five of these suckers, but today I'm going to try a little bit harder. After throwing on some PVA glue and sand down to the base, I took it outside for a quick squirt of white primer. Now it's time for a dark green base coat all over the cloak. As I said, green is one colour I struggle with, and I found this out on day one while trying to paint this elf. I put on a coat of bronze flesh tone as base for my yellow all over the jacket being super careful not to get it anywhere I don't want it. Then I put on a coat of Xandri Just to the pants and some Wild Rider Red to the jacket's fancy little trim. On goes a coat of dried bark to the boots, the quiver and then I throw on some corn red to the scabbard. I really like an ivory bone look to my bows so I do a base coat of wraith bone all over. Next I apply Cadium Flesh to the skin. And again, I'd be super careful not to get it anywhere I don't want it, especially on the face and the hood because they're pretty close together. I thought gold would complement the bow and work well with the brooch and the belt nicely, so I put down Gehenna's gold, not Gehenna's. I learned how to pronounce that this week. Okay, so the base coats are now done, so it's time to move on to the washes. The dark green I have can be super patchy, and even with a couple coats, it doesn't really look too good. So what I do is apply some null oil over it, and also the leathers. I then go over the yellows with Seraphim Sepia, then add a wash of Gulliman Flesh to the skin and the gold. And last up I use a little bit of watered down skeleton hoard just to the arrows. Now the wash is finished and it's time for some highlights and I'm tracking pretty well here. I remember doing the face of my first elf and absolutely struggling. I didn't know what I was doing and I just used a heavy wash and just slapped on the paint. Today I'm going to build it up using highlights with Kislev Flesh and slowly mix in Pallid Witch Flesh to the mix just to the raised areas. This face is tiny and I'm really happy it is in full squint mode so I don't have to paint any eyes. Back to the dreaded green coat and I build up volumes with a 50-50 mix of dark green and warboss green to all the folds of the cape and the hood being super careful not to get any in the recesses. I mix in a little bit of moot green to the mix. I then go over the area and cover less. I mix in some more moot green and then do it again but focus on making this more of an edge highlight. Last up I do some pure moot green as a highlight to the corners and the tips of the cape. Moving on to the yellow coat and I mix one part Euro yellow to one part bronze flesh tone and apply this all over. Just being careful again not to get it in the recesses. Then I apply pure Euro yellow over less area. I mix dawn yellow and Euro yellow to do a top facing edge highlight. And last up, I do a final edge highlight of just pure dawn yellow. This yellow method works wonders if you want a really bright and vibrant yellow. I recommend grabbing a bottle of bronze flesh tone from Vallejo, it's one of my favourite paints. The pants are pretty simple, I use a mix of Xandri dust and bone white to build up the highlight just towards the knees. Now not much has changed from my leather recipe, I've just added another colour and another step. I go over the dried bark with Doomble Brown, 
Then I go for some scrag brown over a smaller area, kind of like a thicker edge highlight. And then to finish it off, I mix in scrag brown and bone white and just do a skinny final highlight to the tips of the boots and the corners of the quiver. So the sword scabbard has more of a red leather look and I go over the corn red with wasducker red and then I apply some evil sun scarlet just as a final highlight. The orange trim on the jacket was pretty simple. I just went over with orange flare and then I mixed up some orange flare and uriel yellow for a final highlight. Time for some true metallic metal and I go back over the Guiana's gold, leaving the recesses dark to give it some readability. Then I go over a smaller area with polished gold all over the raised areas and I just do a final highlight of silver to finish off. On the previous mini I attempted to do some freehand stripes. I actually based this off the box art and I just use a skinny brush for this with war boss green and just go all over the pants taking my time. I feel like a bright red gem will work well against the greens and yellows so I do my usual quick gem method and I apply evil sun scarlet as the base. I then glaze some water down black to the top right. I do a stripe of wild rider red down the bottom left and then a smaller stripe of orange flare over the top. To finish, I put a dot of white over the black glazed area. And to finish up to get that ivory look to the bow, I mix one part contrast medium to one part skeleton hoard and apply that all over the wraith bone. I then just go over the highlight with a mix of bone white and white. And that's it, my wood elf archer is now finished, so let's compare the two. And there you have it, two Wood Elves, one year apart. I feel like I've improved a lot, but there's also so much more I wanna do and improve on. If I had to have one word of advice for someone new to painting or anything like that, what I would say is be brave. Be brave with your painting and just try new things. The reason why I painted so many different models this year was to kind of push myself in different directions and try to get better at different colors and different techniques. But anyway, that's it guys. I hope you enjoy it. I've had a great year of mini painting. I'm really excited for what the next year holds. Please like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments what you'd like me to paint next and I'll see you next time. Cheers.